Hello, 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 and welcome back to kind of the how-to series. This is a project, I don't know how long ago it was, that 18 months ago, something like that, maybe Jean, I'm pretty sure Jean sent me one of these, and we didn't know what to do with it. Well, I've kind of fathomed it out a little bit, um, but I only have one of these left. This is a Tim Holtz folio. They are no longer in production. I can't see them anywhere to buy. So I thought it was a good thing, probably, to dissect it completely and work out how we could make one of our own. So we could make loads if we wanted to. It's held on elastic. I have ordered my knicker elastic from Amazon and it should be coming today. Um, that's the front flap there. This is flaps out there. It's got two flaps, top and bottom here. And then it's got this central section and this was the bit that had us flummoxed. We didn't really know what to do with that. Well, I've, I've unpicked the one that came with Tim Holtz because as you can see the stitching, I mean, my stitching's not great but that's horrendous so uh, I've unpicked it and should I want to use this again I can just sew it up uh, again but I'll show you what I did doesn't want to lie down that's it. Oh, so that's that one that's our template if you like uh, let's pop that down there so this is the one that I made using the measurements from that so I've got my front flip I've got this, opens up my two top and bottom flips and then this is my bit that I've just been showing you. It's a it's a waterfall, it makes a waterfall and I don't know why I couldn't have worked that out the last time but I, I didn't. So yeah, that's it. Um, and of course that'll be decorated up and whatever. So I thought you might like to know how to make it. I will walk you through every last bit of this step by step. The only thing I will say is that some of it's going to be speeded up because it's just repetition. And once you've seen how I do it, you can just crack on and, and do it at your own pace. So it looks very nice. I love that colour. I love that um, the colours I've chosen. So let's get started the ubiquitous file folder you always need a file folder <laughs> and this is quite thick i don't know uh 315 gsm so it's quite it's quite thick and it comes you know folded like that i've chopped a bit off the top because it was quite long um so that bit's chopped off um and this is what we're left with now this piece measures Let's just see what it does measure. It measures nine inches, top to bottom, nine inches. That's what Tim's measured, so I've just gone along with that. Now, the crease, the manufactured crease in there, that can work to our advantage. We can use that there, just. Yep, yeah, that'll be all right. Um, and put all the crease lines in and everything. I might be marginally short there, but it's just going to be a tad. Uh, when I made the one that I've already made this one, I didn't do that. I, I just ignored the crease and it came out there, which it, it's okay. You know, once you stick these on, it's not going to bend or anything. And that's going there anyway, so you're not going to see it. But, you know... I think we can use that manufactured crease um, to our advantage, if you like. Oh, let's get this back out. So I've got that crease there. And then there are a series of creases that go this way. Now, I've got some factory creases in mine, uh, but you might not have. So let's mark in where those creases want to go. So I'm putting my this crease here onto my factory crease there and then I'm going to mark where I've creased it after that so the, fir the first one is three eighths of an inch and then there's one two three four more 
at quarter of an inch. So let's put those in first. I know it all sounds complicated, and I know that, but it really, it really isn't. It's just getting your head round it, really. So let's get that nice and straight. These file folders are not the straightest things in the world, I'll tell you. But So that's on nine inches there. That just happens to be what this measures. And then I'm coming one, two, three, scoring. I've got to score quite heavily because this card's quite thick. Way that went on to another, another score line completely. Then quarter, which is two notches. Then another quarter. That one's there, one, two, here we go. And this is to allow for expansion. You know, if you put things in your folio that are quite thick or anything, you might need the side to be able to go round, you know, to expand. I think they call it a living spine. It's determined to go off the straight and narrow, but it doesn't really matter. One, two. So this is our last one here. There. So I've got one at... You'll probably see it more clearly here. I've got one at three-eighths from, from that, and then a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, and a quarter. And they will all... They will all fold if you want them to. So you can have a living, moving hinge. Should have done that the other way around, actually. It doesn't matter, they'll still move. So you could tell if you if you went like that and pulled that round, you, you'd end up with a nice, a nice hinge. Nice hinged section, I should say. Now, where's my eraser? Here it is. Oh, there it was. It's now on the floor. Don't even know where it went. So those marks will have to wait till later. Actually, I've got an eraser in the end of my pen. Let's do that. So now going from this line, which was the factory fold line, I'm going to push that right into the corner and then I'm going to come along So that's my that line there and that line there so I'm going to come along seven inches and do the same thing three eighths quarter 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 so seven inches from that fold so get your fold right in the corner like that seven inches score Score it good and then three eighths one two three and then quarter and another quarter Ooh, I don't think that's staying on the right line There we go. And that's the same thing there. That's that hinge there. So that folds in uh, on that line. I'm just going to score that on the other side because you should be making your valleys into mountains, not the other way around. So let's just score down there. There we have it. So we'll fold over on there. Lovely fold over on there which actually folds to there okay why is that not working
Well, it should work, shouldn't it? Why is it? Oh, I know, because I haven't cut this side off yet. What a ninny. What an absolute Charlie. Right, so get your crease line, this crease line here, onto the factory crease line. What a nincompoop of a woman. And I'm going to put my scoreboard away temporarily because it's not helping proceedings. So get that, get your score line onto your factory score line, and then just make a mark there, and that's where you want to cut it. This one hasn't got any excess left over, so we'll just use what we've got there. Um, and now I need to cut that. Does that fit on there? Does it? I don't know. No, just doesn't. So I'll have to get the Jolly Green Giant out. Perfect. So that is surplus to requirements. So now we should be able to fold our folio. Yes, perfect. That's perfect. So all I did then was trim the ends, the corners, with my half inch trimmer. Just to smarten it up a little bit. Lovely. So that's that. That's the basis of our folio. Looks fine. Looks good. The thing we've got to do now is make the two little flaps, the ones that go up and down, these ones. So let's measure those, see what those measure. They measure five and three quarters. So we need a bit that's five and three quarters. Six. I don't know if I've got enough room there though. Four and a quarter. No, let's, let's cut it off here. What did I say? Five and three quarters. Um, this is a straight edge here. When you buy them, they're just never folded exactly straight. So five and three quarters. It's just a bit thick up for the Jolly Green Giant, but no mind, he's done it. Thank you for your service. And then we need to cut them at four and a quarter plus a half, because there's a half gets turned in there. So four and three quarters. This I know will do on the little Timmy trimmer. Four and three quarters. I'm just going to cut this end off because, as I say, they're very seldom square. Lovely. And then we'll two at four and three quarters. I'm going to leave that side because it's got the fold in it. Just square this side up and cut out four and three quarters. There we go. So that those two pieces are for our front, uh, our flappy bit. So they go that way. This is the long, the long side. And then we need to score them. So, once again, where did my scoreboard land up? Here, underneath my chair. So, let's just remind ourselves what we're doing. That's going there, like that. So, I need to score at half an inch 
half an inch and half an inch. That's what's gone on there. So let's do that. Half an inch, that's the bit that gets turned over. Another half an inch. Actually, that looks a lot. I'm going to do it at three eighths. One, two, three. That looks better to my eye. And then another three eighths. One, two, three. There we go. Same with this. Half an inch to turn over. Three eighths. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oi. Right, that's us finished with the scoreboard, finished with measuring anything. It's purely down to decorative value now, which is the best bit, isn't it? Let's face it. So I'm just going to take my rounders, my corner rounders, half inch again, and I'm going for the other side, the side that doesn't have the score marks in it, and just round those off. There we go. Right. So we're ready to rock and roll. So the first thing that needs to happen is we need to gesso it. Give it a bit of background, allow it to take any mediums that we want to add to it, you know, after this. And all the time, I'm, I'm just going to use this, which is a foam applicator. I'm going to use my white gesso. You can use any gesso you want. Um, I mean, if you want the whole thing to be black, then you could use black gesso as well, of course. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Um, oh, I've got myself thinking now. Do I want to use black? Ooh. <gasps> Let me pause while, I, while I'm all on that a minute. Well, it transpires that I might have given myself a good idea. I just tested the black gesso out to see what the coverage was like. It's great. And then I tested one of the distress paints over the top to see if it would stand up to having a having black underneath it. And as you can see, it really has. So I'm going to do this in black. <laughs> if it doesn't work, you'll never see this video. <laughs> but it should work. I can't see any reason why it wouldn't. Let me put my white gesso away and get the black gesso out. Ooh, this is exciting. Uh, where's my water? There we go. So I'm just going to put some down on my messy mat. You need quite a bit. This is PBO Studio Acrylics uh, Black Gesso. Gesso is more of a, a ground. You could use acrylic paint. Um, it's just that gesso has got a bit more tooth to it. Ooh, look at that. I'm just using a foam applicator. And from now on, I'll be in quick mode because you can see what I'm doing. So I'll see you at the end.
Right, okay, they are done. They are dry. I'm pretty sure they're dry. Um, and so I've selected some paints to go on the top. Um, on this one, I selected speckled egg and salvage patina to give that nice sort of mottled turquoisey vintagey look. On this one, because we've obviously got a very dark background, black, 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 I have selected antique linen and hickory smoke. Now, if you haven't got distress paints, don't worry about it. Use any acrylics that you've got will be fine. Um, and I'm going to go in with the lightest colour, which is my antique linen. And I'm going to try it on one of these pieces first, in case it looks absolutely awful. So I'll give this a good shake. It's got ball bearing in it to shake it up. So I'll put some out on my messy mat. And I'm just going to apply it, you can see where I applied yesterday's, uh, just with a, a, a sponge. It's a really cheap sponge from a really cheap shop, actually. So pick some paint up and then dab it off onto your messy mat. And then we'll just dab onto here. Oh, yes, that looks nice. I like that. So just dab. Keep turning your sponge around a little bit, otherwise you'll find you get a repeating pattern. From your sponge which is not what you want so just in your hand just keep turning it around there we go that's nice doesn't it, it looks sort of marley so i'll pick some more up and i'm just lightly dabbing that's all i'm doing nothing that you can't do i promise you that it is just a dab so I'll leave you now and I'll go into the world of super fast and I'll see you when all this is, when I've got all the antique linen on. That is all of the antique linen on now. Doesn't it look nice? Really does. It looks gorgeous. Looks like it's got lots of texture and depth to it, which I really like. Whilst I was doing that, I was thinking to myself, wouldn't this look smashing with a, a metallic over it instead of the hickory smoke? So I'm going to go now and see what metallics I can root out and I'll be back. Right, well, I've had a good rootle around. Um, found some that weren't suitable, but I've got this Sennelier one. It's called Iridescent Argent, which is um, Argent Silver. I mean, it looks quite pearly, but it looks quite nice, like it would do. I like this one, which is really, really gold, which I don't think I want to use. And I've got this beautiful copper which I know is really iridescent. But what I thought was that I could maybe use this one, the silvery one, for the background. And then when it comes to stenciling, maybe I could use the copper. Maybe that would look really nice. So that's what I'm going to do. I mean, you know, I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> I really don't. But, you know, we're never going to know unless we give it a try. So, as usual, I'll start on the small pieces. So if it really is awful, it's just a small piece that I have to remake. I don't even know that I've ever had this open, to be honest. 
Oh, it's very silver. Oh, that's lovely. That's really, really silver. I don't know why it looks like that in the packet, but it's silver, silver. Um, shall I use the same sponge? Still got quite a bit on it, so let's just let's just pound that off a bit. It's funny how yellow antique linen looks on white. I think that'll do now. Give this a go. Oh, it's lovely. I hope it catches the light. Otherwise, there's no point putting it on. Yeah, I think I'm going to like that. So I'll go into the land of fast, <laughs> which is not something that I do often. I don't generally work at a, at a fast speed, but I'll see you at the end. We'll see what we think. So there we go. That's all of that done. It is iridescent. It definitely is quite shiny. Not mega shiny, but I think as it dries, it'll get a little bit more shiny. So I'll leave that to dry now and then come back to you. Ooh, it's exciting. Right, so this is all dry and it's actually really quite shiny. I don't know if you can see Yeah, maybe a little bit you can see it. It's 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 nice. It's really nice. So what happens next? I mean you can see our folio is taking shape. That goes there, and in the fullness of time they'll go there. Marvellous, lovely. So what happens next is we need to do the stenciling. And for the stenciling on this one, I use this stencil. I don't know if you can see that. There you go, that one. Um, and on this one, I'm proposing, yes, I'm proposing going back to my damask stencil, which I absolutely adore. It's my favourite ever. These are by um, Craft... I think it's C-R-A-F-T-R-I... A zero. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it says. Maybe the last bit's a number or something. But I'm sure you'll be able to find, or have in your stash even some stencils that you want to use. So let's make a start. Let's start as ever with the smaller bit. Um, now one of these will. I mean they both. They'll both end up folded over like that and stuck into our book. Um, and I just want to put that. This handily fits over the entire thing. So I can line my edges up and go for it. And I'm going to use the copper. 
and I'm going to use a little stencil brush. You just use whatever you're happy with. This is beautifully iridescent, this. It's um, golden, it's golden paint. And it's just gorgeous. So I'm going to get some paint on my brush, dab it off until it's pretty dry, and then let's go for it. Ah, yikes. I'm going to have to swirl it, I think. Otherwise, I will be here all day. I will be here all day anyway, but <laughs> hopefully not stenciling all day. So I just want this to look um, like it's worn on a wall. So you can see some parts of it and you can't see others. So I'm going for that look. Then when I take the stencil off, we'll see what we've got. See if we like it. So there's a little bit down there. Let's do a bit up here. So with the other one, I went sort of around the corners. Here I'm just going for a more... I don't know, a more something look. More kind of distressed, hopefully. And maybe a little bit in this bottom corner. Just a little bit. Right, let's see what that looks like. Oh, well, I quite like that. That's quite nice. And I think when that's dry, it'll look really nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to keep going with that sort of thing in mind, I think. Are you sure? No, nope. not sure about anything. <laughs> no, I do like it. Yep. Yeah. I haven't had to talk myself into it too much, I don't think. I, I like it. So, same sort of idea. You need enough on to make it iridescent. If you don't have enough on, it, it's just not iridescent. But you don't want too much on that it's going to squelch under your, your um, stencil. Because that just looks horrible. So it's finding that happy medium, really. Sure, I've got enough on there. Tiny bit at the top. Have to come down a little bit because the top gets folded in, of course, so you won't see that. Uh, and maybe just a little bit down this side. Have a look at that and see what we think. Yes, I like that. I do like it. Looks nice. Looks very nice. Okay, so I'll leave those to dry before I turn them over and I'll carry on at a quicker pace. I'll speed the video up whilst I do because you'll it'll drive you dotty otherwise. Uh whilst I do the rest of, of the folio. So catch you in a minute.
Okay, so I have stenciled and stenciled and stenciled some more. And it looks really nice. I do like it. I'm not sure the camera is picking it up to its max, but it's really nice. It's really shiny. I'm so glad I did this. So now what I'm going to take is some um, modeling paste, structure paste, whatever. And I've still got a little bit of paint left there. Um, and my palette knife because I want to make this have a sort of 3D texture so I'm just gonna you don't need much paste at all so I'm just going to mix that up with the copper that I've got left which will save waste in that and hopefully when it dries it will dry a nice colour I really don't know if it will or not, but we'll give it a go. We can always paint over it if it's not very nice. I think that's enough. Time will tell. Time will tell. So, I want this. That's why I've left this sort of void here in the middle. So I want that about... About there. Does that look middle-ish? I think so. So I'm just going to take this, hold it down quite firmly. And push it through your stencil. I find a palette knife best for you putting structure paste on, modelling paste on. I think we're just going to have enough. I don't think we're going to have much spare, but that's good. We don't need any spare. It's just a waste of product if you do. There we go. So that's that. Okay. Now, as Tim would say, the dismount. Way. Oh, yes. That looks lovely. That looks lovely. Just perfect. Not too much, not too little, just Goldilocks. Right, I'm going to go posy and go and have a bit of a tidy up, wash my stencil brush, etc, etc. Uh, my stencils even. If you've used just ordinary acrylic paint like this one, nothing, no harm will come to them if you just leave them. Just get sturdier. But with um, texture paste, I always wash it because it's going to encroach on your stencil space. So I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so everything I think is dry. I've had a bit of a tidy up. It's looking lovely. So what I'm going to do now is ink around it. And because I've used acrylic paint, which it means it's now a non-porous surface, uh, I need to use stays on, Versafine Claire, some, uh, archival, something like that. So I'm going to use my Versafine Claire and just ink around it as we would ink around anything. And I'm using black because obviously that was our base colour. And it'll just hopefully bring it all out as it always does when you ink things. It just looks so much better. So that's going to get folded over there. So let's just ink along there and just inside in case you can see that there so i'm going to ink around everywhere so i'll be back when i've finished that okay so i've inked around there and left it a good while to dry because as i say the acrylic paint that we've put on makes the surface non-porous so it's not going to sink into the paper to dry you have to leave it and i've left mine a good 10 minutes i'd say um, and then I got the heat gun out so it's dry now but it does make a difference once you've gone around it in black I think it just sets it off it's just lovely so I'm really pleased with what we've done the next thing to do is to stick our um, lugs whatever you want to call them <laughs> I don't know what they're called in so I prefer this side to that side 
So I'm going to have this side as the outside. So the top half inch just gets folded in like that. And then we're just going to stick it. I'm going to get some clips because I found the one, the turquoise one when I did it, a little bit resistant to sticking. But once I'd clipped it for a minute or two, it was absolutely fine. So we need to kind of find out where this is going. About there, I would say. So it's about half an inch, maybe more, in from each fold. So once again, this is non-porous. So we have to wait for the glue to do its thing. So there we are. Let's just check we've got that fairly central. About there, I think. That's great. Let's just hold that down and stick some clips on it. end. Let's just check that that looks fairly central. Yeah, not bad at all. So we stick the other one on. Which side of this do I like best? Maybe that one? Yeah, I think so. So I'll fold it that way. Same, 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 same thing. And then we're, we're, we're getting towards the end, really. So try and line this up with that one. Just about there, I think. Oh, maybe a bit further over. About there. That looks square. I think so. I think it does. So I'll clip that one whilst we get on with the next thing that we have to do. There we are. So that can just dry in its own sweet time whilst we get on with the next bit. Now the next bit is the paper waterfall, the card waterfall that you attach all your exciting bits to. So I've got a piece of card here. It's about, I don't know, I'm guessing, 220, 220. And I need three pieces that are four inches wide by, good question. Oh, it's not in there. Oh, it's here. Three, uh, four inches wide by eight and three quarter inches tall four by eight and three quarters so let's cut this at 12 well let's just cut it into into four inches shall we so i need three i need three pieces four by eight and three quarters four And this was the bit I had problems with Timmy's bit because it just wasn't square. Neither's that. Four and one last one at four. There we go. Nice remnant. And then I need these at eight and three quarters. So I'll see if I can get them lined up and I'll do them all together. See if that will work. Eight and three quarters. Just there. Okay, so that should be all right there. 
so what Tim did with his, he rounded off all the corners. Well, I don't want to do that. I want mine to be square because I want to attach things to this right up to the edges. And I don't want the, the corners rounded. So I'm leaving mine square, eight and three quarters by four. And then what you have to do is come in half an inch on each one. Um, so you've got your bottom one laid down. I need some more clips for this. So you come in half an inch. I might have to do it over here on this section where it's, where it's light because I can't see on the black. So line up your half inch. I'm using a ruler, I just find it's easier. Get your next piece. Put that up, make sure it's level, top and bottom. And then I want to clip that, which is trickier than it sounds. So put a clip in there at the top. Just make sure that's half an inch at the bottom still. Bring it up to there, lovely. And we'll just clip that. And then I need half an inch again for my last piece. So I'm just going to use this because it will fit between the clips. And seeing where it is, I tell you, it's not easy with black. It absolutely isn't easy. So that's that to there. And I'm going to put a pencil line because I've got no chance without it. So that's where, that's nice and shiny, isn't it? That's where this one wants to come to. So line that up there, put a clip in, make sure it's still lined up before you put your bottom clip in, perfect, clip that. Right, so that's it, that's the three things. Now all we have to do is sew them together and you sew them I'm making this sound complicated. It's not really. It's one, two and a half inches from this end. Is that right? No. One, two, three. Three and a half inches. I'm lying to you. It's three and a half inches from this edge here that you need to sew. Now, what I'm going to do is draw a line um, just to aid me. So three and a half inches. One, two, three and a half, yep, yeah, okay. So I'm going to draw a line there. And just turn it around now, away from the clips, and I can complete that line. Doesn't look the straightest. And down here as well. There we go. So that's the line that I want to sew on. Yeah, that's perfect. So I will make a, a file of all the measurements that you need. In fact, I might do it before I finish this video and, and put it up so you can screenshot it. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just going to go and sew down there. So there we are. That's that. I can take the clips off and erase the pencil marks, cut my ends, tidy up generally. Let's take the ends off these. If you haven't, if you don't want to sew, you haven't got a sewing machine or whatever, then you can still do it. You just need to put a thin um, bead of glue between, you know, Get it at half and put your thin bead of glue down there. Let's just erase these pencil marks. Hopefully, anyway. Yes. 
lovely. And this one, just where I've veered off slightly, slightly. There we go. So I'm just going to turn that over and I'm going to get my bone folder and press that right down. and flat right so we're coming along you can't even see those stitches can you there they are um so the next thing to do is fold this over timmy ruler any ruler is a good idea now uh what you want to do is this end here you need to measure half an inch now timmy this is so difficult to see in black, I tell you. I'm going to put a piece of white or something behind there so I can see what I'm, what I'm up to. There we go, that's better. So half an inch from this edge, put your Timmy ruler, any ruler that you can measure half an inch on accurately. And that's there. So then we want to bring this over like that. So this comes to the edge of the ruler and it is a bit of a fadaddle whoops there goes my ruler so I think that's it there so let's see if I can press that down there. If you don't do it accurately, your waterfall won't be accurate, that's the thing. So that's that. That's great. Lovely. Phew. So you need your bone folder to really press that down. There. And there's your waterfall. Few. So there's your waterfall, you've got six things and that's as far as we're going today. That uh, fits into there and you build up onto it, you build your things onto it. But we're not going to start doing that today, we're going to just celebrate the fact that we have made a folio. I'm not sure if these are dry yet, yeah they are. I can unclip those. So there we have it. There is our folio that goes this way. So uh, Tim's folds in like that and like that, but I think I'm going to fold mine that in and then that and have the elastics coming across here because I want to see all of that front because it's lovely. And then you open it up, these fold up out of the way, but you can of course build on these as well. And then that goes there like that, just fits in nicely, perfectly in fact. And we'll talk about attaching it and everything else in the next episode. So that is how to make a Tim Holtz folio from start to finish. And it's really lovely, I love it absolutely love it and when I get my knicker elastic I'll show you how to do that as well but that's today's project and it's really 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 lovely so thanks for joining me oh I'll just go now and do all the measurements on a piece of paper and then I'll put them up right at the end okay so I think we're done <clears throat> and I made this is really quite rough but if you followed along with the video, you'll understand what I'm saying. So now is probably quite a good time to take a screenshot. So this is the main file folder here. Seven inches back, six and three quarters front, two and a half small, the small front flap. And these are the score lines. This is the big score line where it gets folded over these are score lines for the living hinge type thing the flip flappy 
bits inside. That's the measurements for those. And then these are the waterfalls. So you cut four, cut three at four inches by eight and three quarters. So I hope you can see that clearly. And I hope that with those measurements and the video to go along, hopefully you'll be able to make one. If you fall into any problems at all, and I, you know, I'm willing to concede this is not the best diagram I've ever drawn in my life. But, you know, if you need any help, just message me, leave a comment below, whatever. I will get back to you. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I think what we've made is just gorgeous. I love it. So we've got that one and we've got this one. And the choice is entirely up to yours, up to you. This one a black gessoed, this one a white gessoed and used speckled egg and salvaged patina um, paints. But as I say, you can use any paint that you've got. It doesn't have to be that. Um, and any stencils that you've got. So, great. I'll see you very, very soon when we'll start the exciting bit, which is the decorating. So bye for now.